What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited about today's episode because we're doing something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time, and that is build a cattle panel arbor. Now I love the pictures of a uh, you know, beautiful arbor going through, uh, going over top of like a walkway or a pathway, and there's just fruit hanging from it, whether it's uh, you know melons or cucumbers or pole beans, and there's just stuff just draping down through through the cattle panel into the uh, into the walkway and just makes this amazing, uh, just almost majestic entrance into the garden. So I have been always wanting to do that. I've always wanted to implement it in our garden and it's taken three years for it to happen and I don't know why it's taken that long, but today the wait is over, we're making it happen and I'm gonna show you how to do it for under $25 a piece. That's right, under 25 bucks a piece. So these cattle panel arbors ran me the total for two of them, I'm gonna make two of them today, the total was $49.54. And to show you that, I've got the receipt, just to prove it. Because you guys are always like, show me the receipt, I don't believe you. There is the total, $49.54. I don't calculate tax into that because tax is different everywhere, but uh, I got these from Tractor Supply, and uh, you know the grand total with tax was $52.51. So if that extra $2.51 bothers you, well, I apologize. <laughs> but I'm calling it under 25 bucks a piece. You know, there's no, uh, no clickbait here, super easy to do. Only requires uh, a couple things. You're just gonna need some cattle panel. These come, uh, the ones I got came in 16 foot lengths. That's gonna give you a really good archway so you're gonna have something to, to walk under without you know, whacking your head. And it's also, um, it's also a really thick gauge so that way it's gonna, it's gonna hold up to the weight. So if you get a lot of, a lot of fruit on there, it's not gonna sag and, and bend. So I got a 16 foot cattle panel. Uh, and then I also got, uh, uh, for each side, I got two of the five foot um, T posts. Now you can go three foot, four foot, doesn't really matter. You just need something to sink into the ground. That way you can uh, either zip tie it or use metal wire. I prefer metal wire because if the whole thing is made out of metal, nothing's breaking and nothing's deteriorating. So it's gonna last for a lifetime and it's really gonna be an awesome investment for years to come. So that, those are the only three things you need. Cattle panels, T posts, and a little bit of metal wire and you're all set. So, all right. Let's go get the stuff and uh, we'll get started. So I know what you guys are gonna say. Luke, how'd you get a 16 foot long piece of cattle panel back to your house? Well, this is how. This is exactly how. Now call me a redneck, but it worked. Call me a redneck, but it worked. It was very sketchy and there was a few times I thought for a second I was gonna lose it, but it worked. All we did was we took the, uh, took the uh, twine and uh, tied it down to the trailer hitch and then brought it all the way up. And you might be asking yourself, well, Luke, you must, you must have scratched the heck out of the car. Your wife's gonna kill you. Nope, I got roof racks, roof racks. It's sitting right on top of the roof racks on both sides, so it's not scratching the heck out of the paint. And uh, we got it here. It was super sketchy though, but we got it. And uh, I had to tie it down to the front as well as the back. And that five mile trip was about as scary as anything I've ever done. <laughs> I thought for sure I was gonna have either a ticket or I'd lose it on the way, or both. <laughs> but none of those happened. There was a lot of honks, a lot of staring, a lot of, uh, a lot of people questioning what I was doing, and I did have to travel with my hazards on because there was no way I was gonna travel 55 miles an hour down uh, two country roads with this on top of my car this way. So I traveled with some hazards on and people laughed and sneak, uh, snickered and, and uh, looked at me funny, but we got it here and that's all that matters. So we're gonna get this stuff unload it from the roof rack and uh, take it over to the garden and get this stuff assembled. Trick for you, don't tip it to any which way, otherwise the weight will start to bend and then you start stabbing into the ground or whacking things behind you. Pick it straight up and support, support it with your arm. Hold it down here about two thirds of the way down, hold it at the very top and hold it against your, hold it against your forearm so it goes straight, that way you're all moving in a straight line because a 16 foot long piece of cattle panel, it'll tell you where it wants to go real quick and it might not be in the same direction you want to go. <laughs> all right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take two T posts and put them in each raised bed. We're gonna put them on the end cap of each raised bed so that way we can attach the cattle panel to it. Now, obviously this is a total optional step. If you really wanted to, you could, um, you could uh, just bury the cattle panel into the ground and then bend it over and use the, basically use the, the, the spring tension 
of the cattle panel to hold it in place. I personally don't like that. Uh, I don't like the sound of that whatsoever, but uh, I've seen it done and they didn't tell me if anyone got hurt within a year or not. So <laughs> I can't tell you if it really works or not, but uh, what I can tell you is that this way, it's at least gonna be secure. It's not gonna move anywhere. And if you have 30, 40 pounds of fruit hanging on it, it's, uh, you know, it's not gonna shift around on you. So um, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna attach these and then pretty much just uh, bend the cattle panel into place. It's about as easy as it gets, folks. All right, so we're pretty much ready to go. I got the T-post hammered in there. That took about five minutes. Getting all the, the materials carried over here took about uh, three or five minutes. And then getting it bent over, well, that should probably pretty much, should pretty much take maybe two minutes. So this project really does not have to take that long. Um, we're gonna take the, the cattle panel, we're gonna stick it in between the, the raised beds, in between the, uh, in between the end cap and the T-post. And that way there's something on both sides of it, kind of sandwiching it together and then we'll add extra support or uh, extra security with the, uh, the metal wire that we're gonna twist tie around it. All right. So this stuff's super heavy. Getting it in place is the hardest part. Once you get it in place, you're pretty much golden. Okay. Ugh. Once you get one end supported, you pretty much bend the other end up like a spring, slide it into place. There we go. All right. One side done. Now the other side. Locked in place. Very easy. Extremely easy. In fact, surprisingly easy. That took not even close to two minutes. In fact, that took all of 30 seconds. <laughs> so, all right, there you go. Check it out. Now all we have to do is just secure it with some, uh, some metal ties, but you know, as is, it's actually really secure, pressed up against, kind of sandwiched in between the end cap and the, uh, and the T-post. And I mean, I'm six foot three. This thing is plenty tall enough. I mean, this thing is all of seven feet, if not seven and a half feet tall, um, and uh, it's gonna be a great little arbor to walk under. I mean, this is, this is fantastic for how inexpensive this was. So I love this, this is great. Nice and secure, nice and sturdy, and uh, yeah, it's not gonna bend down on you. It's not gonna bend down on you and, uh, and collapse under the weight, because it's nice, nice thick gauge metal, and uh, yeah, I'm really happy with it. So this is what I was talking about. So you got the end cap here, and then the T-post here, and right here is the cattle panel. So coming up, you got all these, all these little bumps that you would normally adhere uh, wire to. And those are all pretty much locking this in place from moving around. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come through here with some metal, some metal, uh, some metal wire and just tie them to, uh, to really make sure they're secure. But as is, I mean, this thing with the, the amount of tension that this has, the amount of spring tension that this metal has here, bent across these two, uh, these two T-posts here. This thing is really not going anywhere. So there you go. There is a cattle panel arbor for under $25. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And uh, you might be asking yourself, Luke, what are, you gonna, what are you gonna trellis up this? We're gonna do pole beans. That's right. You guys have been begging me to plant the rest of the beans that we have for our year adversity. Our bean bed is totally full. There was not enough room for our pole beans and I said, I'm not gonna plant any pole beans in that bed because logistically I just cannot make it happen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plant our pole beans right along these two cattle panel trellises. They're gonna trellis up. We're gonna have beans draping down. We're gonna have beans hanging from the, from the, the sides and from the top. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be a nice canopy that you can walk under and it's gonna be beautiful. Also, I know you guys are gonna be asking this, well, Luke, isn't it gonna block a lot of light once it's all filled with foliage? Really, the way we've oriented this, because we've oriented it north and south, the sun comes uh, east to west, meaning that any shadow that is cast is only gonna be cast for about maybe 15 to 30 minutes at most when it's directly overhead. After that, it's pretty much gonna barely cast a shadow. So uh, we're really, yeah, we're really not gonna have too much of an issue blocking out sunlight to our other plants in the garden. Had we oriented it uh, east to west, uh, it would have been a problem because you have basically uh, 
a seven, seven and a half foot tall wall of foliage that'll obviously cast a really large shadow. So this is, this is pretty minimal for the, uh, the amount of shadow that's gonna be cast and it'll be cast right into the rest of the walkway, which comes down the main corridor of our garden. So all good there. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the Am I Gardener channel, reminding you to like this video if you did. Make sure to subscribe because we've got a ton more content coming out and share this video with a friend if you think they'd enjoy it. All right, I'm sweating. I'm gonna get inside, get some refreshments. All right, see you guys, bye. Woo, it is hot out. Ah, good job done though.